Abby! <laughs> I can't do that. You better not put that on there. Erase it. Well, hello everyone. I'm Colby with the Max Happy Homestead. That's Elsa girl. And Daddy-O just gave them some hay. It's a beautiful day now, but uh, I tell you, it was, it got crazy a while ago. Heavy storms. You can see kind of over the stands, there's a tree down over there. There's a tree down over there in the other garden. So it's, it got kind of bad. So now we're gonna come out and try to work. Uh, this morning, it was literally probably 40 to 45 milking this morning freezing and now it's warm back up and it's actually probably around 70 so uh, welcome to Mississippi so uh, we're gonna get started I'm gonna kind of show you just a kind of an update of the garden area um, again it got a flood so it's probably kind of bad looking right now but uh, we're gonna show you the update there we're also gonna show you the update of the raised beds and kind of show you the greenhouse just to give you an update on how everything's coming for spring uh, we'll also show you uh, the animals how they're doing we will show you the hogs how they've grown uh, just in the last three to four weeks how, how big they've gotten uh, they couldn't bust through the chicken wire or the uh, cattle panels now because they couldn't even fit so uh, so we're glad of that but now uh, they're doing good uh, we just want to give you an update let you come with us uh, as it's gotten sunny now and uh, just show you uh, what we're doing for the day okay so you know we built this run I showed this on another video where we had the cows um, from field to field when we do rotational grazing we have uh, six permanent paddocks and then we have some temporary fencing that goes behind it but but basically we built this run to com uh, connect the three that's over here by the lake and this little run that goes behind our house to uh, three permanent ones behind the barn here so um, now since we kind of made this area we've got this kind of random junk area that has a, a pretty tree in it just a hardwood and we've got some little uh, Leland cypress is growing and uh, some um, Let's see what that is. That's like a this one right here. These are just some kind of some ground covering items that we were going to kind of Keep in a good little area, but kind of make it look pretty but now we're really thinking about changing that we're thinking about making this like a little food forest um, We've got a lot of wild hedges growing here. So we're gonna clear it up uh, We're trying to plant some herbs that we don't use as much uh, things like yarrow and comfrey um, some high up and some uh, things like that and then we have some um, elderberries that we need to get planted we've got uh, so we're gonna try to to do some cuttings on some dewberries and some wild blackberries that's in the woods so we're thinking about kind of making them more native here don't do any kind of um, bedding just simply take the uh, the weeds away and of course um, the, the wild hedge and let things kind of grow naturally over here so we're, we're, we're thinking about doing that give me your ideas and see what you think but it's basically gonna be like a little food for us that we don't use a lot, but that we'll be able to utilize for different seasons, especially when it comes to tinctures, uh, elderberries, and wild uh, some wildflower seasonally. So I think this would be a good little area for it. Um, we're thinking about putting some mild rosemary and things like that. So that way the bees can enjoy this area as well. Um, so we'll see how it goes, but give me your thoughts there. So we got this random piece right between uh, the two, uh, right behind, in front of the run, we had to clear out, but really just kind of goes between the two property uh, areas and it's just kind of ugly right now. So we're gonna try to clean it up and make it look better um, Again, Misty will walk you through uh, I'm gonna say her greenhouse because uh, She is uh, that's her baby there. So we'll we'll let her walk you through that But we'll kind of show you how everything's doing. Uh, this is the strawberries again. It's rain so excuse the mess But you see a lot of them are starting to turn red beautiful strawberries this year our, All our strawberries are doing good. Uh, we made strawberries off about four or five plants Look at these clusters. You can see them right there turning red. Look at those right there. That's awesome. We've never really had good luck with strawberries, but it's because our, our plants have really been young. Look at that. So when we started doing cuttings and letting the runners run, we started getting stuff out of this raised bed and, and devoted this raised bed to strawberries. Now we do have uh, peppermint and spearmint in front it does kind of go crazy so we have to kind of watch it so uh, but we put some hay out so that way the strawberries can get red really get red before we take them off um, and, and it's they're really doing well I mean, we're real pleased with them these are fully organic strawberries uh, we do have some catnip I'm sorry there's some catnip there we have uh, squirrels that like to hang out with our strawberries hence the nets we bought the cats the barn cats to take care of the straw the uh, squirrels so we put catnip here so they love to come in and they literally they literally will just lay in it and actually bite that catnip so it's kind of cool but they'll kind of make this their little bed 
um, our problem was they were trying to make this their litter boxes so hence the net so um, but they would not mess with this area at all so but they've kind of they hang out right here so it allows them to keep the squirrels away from this and also the birds from picking it and they even slugs so uh, you can see we had to put this net up I don't know if we've talked about this in the other videos they're ugly this net is terrible uh, but we had to put it up because we had cats that were taking care of the squirrels but didn't get in here and thinking this was just some awesome litter box and this is this is beautiful organic soil the last thing we want to do is have a cat uh, using it for the wrong reason so um, we've got some things going to seed we've got some kale going to seed arugula going to seed um, some lettuce that is starting to go to seed this is all our stuff that we had planted last fall and winter and it's doing just wonderful we're still harvesting uh, the lettuce still harvesting the kale uh, we did, were harvesting some of the arugula but now it's kind of went to seed um, back here we have our potatoes this is just one of the three areas we do have potatoes this is we've got about 40 or 50 tubers planted right here uh, we plant them close and we've never had a problem with them we planted them last year and just didn't have a good luck in some of the tighter beds so we built this bed specifically for them um, like I said this is some harvest blend uh, all of these are organic uh, potatoes some of them are heritage breeds we have some Yukon gold some um, some reds and also a purple uh, harvest blend so we're excited about them we've never done purple uh, so we, we just want to kind of enjoy that um, you can see our big compost we need to turn it again our compost has done well we actually used it in some of our raised beds this year um, the only thing is where we did the pile method I think we'll come in and do bins because some of this on the bottom is ready but we can't use it because all the stuff on top needs to actually go into the compost process so we're going to change that I'm sorry does anybody want her she gets on her nerves she's so loud hey Allie girl so just while we're here by the animals you can see Allie uh, we think she's pregnant she's been with our bull and exposed so I think she is um, I've had seen her come back in heat so we think she's probably about three or four months bred so I think we're okay there um, our little Angus heifer Angus bull uh, they're here as companion mates for our, our our basically our jersey so uh, they're doing good we actually have just fenced in another area I don't know if you remember uh, me showing you the other apiary where we had the bees we have another apiary which has some family land on it so we're gonna actually put some meat cows up there and keep them away from the main homestead uh, again just so we have enough grass enough room for rotational grazing for just our, jer our jersey herd and our milk cows and then we will maneuver some meat cows back here especially some of the steers and leave strictly our big beef cows such as what we're hoping that, that uh, beauty ends up being uh, and leaving a good herd up there of meat cows so you can see our bull back there our little bull excuse me sizzle beauty and Alan. so again over here we've got we've got uh, asparagus finishing up we've got some sunflowers already starting to grow uh, well asparagus some of the asparagus is still going we got some arugula going to seed here we've actually got tons of carrots still going, still growing. We've planted about a. I'm sorry. Uh, we've planted about 180 tomatoes. So we had we ran out of room. So now we're planting some in this raised bed, just to enjoy. These are some um, some yellow heritage breed uh, uh, organic in my gardener breed uh, tomatoes. So we're excited about those. We got some broccoli that's finishing and going to seed. Uh, we got our herbs. We've got our deal that's replanting itself. We let it go to seed and let it, let it literally replant itself right back here. We use this for pickling and also for uh, baked chicken and baked pork chops and things like that. We've got some Rumex, which is just a little lettuce right there. Some chives, some lemon basil. We've got some more spearmint. We've got some uh, Ichinea root. Or some, uh, basically, it's just a cone flower for the bees and also for tinctures. Uh, we've got rosemary. We've got uh, some parsley. Some more rosemary some sage some other things growing so everything's doing real well in, in the herbs as well we try not to mess with this at all um you see it needs to be weeded so we'll start on that too so uh hey girls <laughs> uh these little peach trees we we um we lost peaches a few years back so what we did we we actually had some that, that uh they, they literally broke off to nothing so we took a stem and replanted those uh, so they're doing really well just to start growing chickens we've got about our, our 20 30 chickens buffalo pinkertons olive eggers easter eggers barred rocks black turkey giants and then we have americana rooster so they they do some beautiful beautiful eggs we have about five shades of eggs um i know misty's doing a video but look at this that's our broody chicken 
She's actually fisting a hatch out. Probably about five or six uh, chicks. And that's so cool. We've got an incubator. We incubate, but it's cool to have actually a broody chicken. She actually sitting on her eggs. Uh, this is some of the chickens that we have uh, incubated. These are either olive eggers and some of these are uh, Easter eggers. And then, of course, we have some Jersey Giants in there as well. So, beautiful, beautiful little chickens. And probably that guy's probably a rooster. So, just some updates there. We're going to walk over to the garden. We'll show you that. Patty Mae, can you say hey? This is our great Pyrenees. She's the guard dog of the place. One of the barn cats. Let's go look at the, the rest of the, the items here. Uh, our, our onions are doing great. This is some purple onion, sweet onion, some Vidalia onions. Both of those are doing wonderful. Um, look at these potatoes. These are about another 30 planted here. They are doing excellent. This is actually, we tried something. We actually took uh, potatoes that we bought, organic potatoes that we bought from the store. They were not really tubers. They were not really seeds. They were just simply potatoes. We let them get old. We let them kind of get heads on them and we cut them to plant them and you know what they're doing better than any other ones we've had they are organic they are non-gmo but man they're doing good so we want to show you those two so that's about 70 potatoes between the both and then like i said we got some on our other look how big our pigs are george and pit george and peppa they're doing good hey pigs hey pigs Hey dude! Hey, what do they have out there? What does George and Peppa have out there uh, in that water? Is that a muddy puddle? Puddles. Muddy puddle? Tell me about it. Muddy puddles. Muddy puddles. Uh, if you have children and watch Peppa Pig, you understand this completely. My daughter's named these two uh, pigs just for that show. So let's go look at our bees. And then we'll move over to the garden. We do have our little orchard. Um, this is the first, well, actually about the third year for some of this stuff. But uh, we have a blueberry patch that's doing great. I'll show you those. But we have a grapevine that's making uh, muscadine grapes, basically. Um, we've got some blackberries that we just started. Actually, these came from seed. Um, we, we didn't think they were actually going to grow, but they're actually doing okay. Uh, we've got an apple tree right there. Uh, some more blueberries. Now, we have... Like I said, we have a blueberry patch, but we wanted to try them over here by the bees to see how they do. So we got some blueberries, some raspberries, uh, some more grapes that we've started, a little fig that we've started. Um, and then, of course, we've got four newts right here of bees. They're all doing really good. We have got one that is established queen. We've got another one that we've got a queen cell in, and we've got two that um, we're watching. Um, the one on the end, if you uh, follow us on Facebook, we helped one of our friends... Uh, they're, they're, they were fishing to leave him. So we made this nuke for him uh, from his bee. So we've got uh, also another, really a starter beehive. Uh, the sad, crazy thing, I don't see any bees coming out of there. So I'll have to check that one just a little bit. Uh, we've got our big hive that's doing great. We've got another little hive and two other little hives. So together here we have about nine, nine hives. And then we have uh, three at our other apiary. So they're doing good. Uh, Harley, stay right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open these bees and make sure we got some bees. There's one right there. So let's see, make sure we got some bees. I'm not in a bee suit, and if y'all watch any of my videos on bees, I literally get stung all the time. Okay, they're doing good. Okay, I just want to make sure we had some bees in there. Whew. Another little apple tree. Come on, girls. All right, we've got some old landscaping timbers and fence and stuff that we use. Um, that is some, some wood that we're letting it kind of break down. Uh, we'll put that in raised beds underneath, kind of having the approach that kind of letting it uh, really be a, a really nice base to any kind of raised bed with some hay. All right, to our garden. You see our other paddock over there that we talked about. And then all that land behind this in front of the pines is where we put uh, the other rotational grazing that's growing good summer grass. You can see they're just beautiful over there, but we don't have to use those fields for about another three weeks in our rotational grazing plant so we won't start using that till just a few more more weeks so, all right so we'll start off with our potatoes over here uh as you can tell we got some bad rains a while ago but um just update we had about 26 more potatoes left 
So we planted those over here. Didn't think they'd work because this soil is terrible on this side of the garden. But we plant them and they're doing great. Uh, in these three next beds is squash that's all coming up. It's about a hundred, a hundred uh, squash plants that we planted from In My Gardener. Uh, we got four rows of uh, zucchini. We love saute and zucchini and squash together along with a little broccoli. Uh, we've got some Henderson bush beans. Both of these bush beans were actually our seed. Um, we, uh, we really didn't know if they were going to come up because we did not plant them last year. Because uh, I don't know about you, sometimes bush beans are hard to pick. They just, they're hard to deal with, uh, especially with our children. Um, so peas tend to, tend to be a little bit easier for us to pick. However, um, we didn't plant butter beans last year because we had some in the freezer. This year we ran out. So we planted these and these were from two years ago seed. Look how good they're doing. Um, we've got some pink eye purple hull peas starting. Some, some, these are, these two rows here are from two years ago seed lady peas. I don't know if y'all have ever ate lady cream peas, but they are our favorite. Um, the bad thing about it, I don't know if it's just Mississippi or our soil. We can't seem to hardly grow lady peas. So, uh, we've tried two or three different varieties. Actually last year, these seeds are from last year where we grew some but it was never enough to really eat so what we said is you know what what we'll do is try to save the seed from where we grew last year and to plant this year so just patience is a virtue so i'm hoping our lady peas will really do well uh here we have some more squash and more zucchini starting to come up uh these rows were a little bit behind because we actually had extra rows for um for some more bush beans but just i didn't need them so we ended up planting more zucchini more squash as you can see i've got more peas more butter beans uh, more varieties of all those things. Uh, we're excited about having more pink eye purple hull, uh, Mississippi pink eye. Both of those, we do have a lot in the freezer. We still have about 10 gallons or so in the freezer, but you can never have too much. And my wife is going to do a lot more uh, canning this year where we did a lot more freezer last year. Um, here we had uh, some corn left over uh, from our corn patch, and we'll, we'll get to that over there. But basically, we had just had some corn left over. This is more of our decorative corn. It's the Indian corn. Uh, it's really going to be producing more for uh, prettiness for, you know, October and Thanksgiving. We had some extra rows. So we wanted to use it. Um, so we, we don't know. We've never grown it. It's called a gym or Indian corn. Uh, it is organic corn. However, it's just, uh, you know, we just we don't know how it's going to come out. It's growing. Uh, you know, corn's a grass, so it, it actually is coming up good. I just hope it makes corn. So that's our goal. Look, my little girl is stuck. I told her don't get in the mud, and she is literally almost knee deep. <laughs> I'm coming. Let me get you out. That's why you need to listen to your daddy. All right, let's see. Can you get out? Can you get out? Help her, Harley. Okay. I can get her out. Daddy. All right, let's go get her out. Then we'll finish our tour. Alright, come on, let's walk. Pull your feet out. Pull your feet out. Right here. Hold on to that eddy. I'm going to get stuck. Oh. oh, goodness. What do you say? What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. You're so deep. Alright, so we'll finish the garden tour from this side. So again, our peas are doing well. We've got our corn right here that's coming up. There's that Indian corn. Uh, we have some more. Um, these are some more lady peas, a different variety that we're trying to grow that actually needs, they're going to have runners. So I'm going to put some post on it um, or either some more panels. Now, this year we are doing uh, all heirloom seed other than one corn. Uh, I know I said that in the first garden video, but basically uh, all our tomatoes, we planted again about 104, I think, in these three beds here. Uh, we do. We did put the cattle panels up. Some of these are determined. Some of these are indeterminate. We wanted to grow all different varieties here. So we have three rows of uh, of uh, potatoes, and they. I mean, excuse me, tomatoes. And uh, you can see them. They're starting to come up. These are all from seed. Uh, so we're excited about them too. This be three rows. We hadn't planted our peppers yet, just because uh, it's a little chilly. So we hadn't planted those yet. Uh, here is all our uh, pole peas or pole beans uh, this is a variety here these two are from a local grower they quit producing these seeds last year at, at any co-op you can't get this Florida pole around here anymore 
so I, I'm not a big speckled pea person. However, it's one of those things where I did not want to lose the, the chance to grow these seeds again. So we're growing these to eat, but really more than that, it's just to make sure we have enough seed to, to utilize and give to people. Um, lastly, before we get to the corn, we have more. Uh, this is actually a Baker Creek. Uh, I think it's called McCaskley or McClaskey. I'm sorry if I, if I butchered that, excuse me, but I've never grown them. They're like a green bean, so I'm gonna try them and see how we do. And our kids like green beans okra our girls love okra so we've got four rows of okra um, different varieties in my garden are also two from us a spineless okra that we grew last year and kept the seeds and then again this is cucumbers we're going to grow a trellis basically an oblique tre trellis where the cucumbers will hang in the cattle panels underneath so i gotta get my cattle panels but they're all starting to come up here uh, i don't know if you can see them but there's some little seeds little seedlings coming up um, everything we did we planted in seedlings uh, in the garden other than uh, well, I mean pure seeds in the garden pure so other than um, our tomatoes and, and then uh, of course our peppers are still there so uh, getting to the corn right quick it's getting to be a long video uh, we've got uh, this is their only hybrid corn there's three rows of what we call a G90 or a peaches and cream sweet corn uh, we wanted to grow it does well around here in this area uh, still have some in the freezer but that's really the only hybrid seed that we grew this year uh, that was not a true heirloom corn. So, uh, some other corns. This is a in my garden corn here, uh, ambrosia, um, that we're excited about. We've never tried it. These two rows are dedicated to the Pratt family from Michigan. This was some of their Indian or Jim corn. It grows big stock. So, they were giving this out at Deep South. So, we, we, we took these two rows and made it for them. Hoping to get some of that good Michigan corn in Mississippi. So, that's there. You know, they're actually starting to really come up. This row's doing a little bit better than this row, but it's doing really good. Uh, again, all this here is just more sweet corn, more heirloom sweet corns, a few little different kinds. Um, but you can see everything is really coming up. Our corn we plant together just because it's, it does better when it can uh, basically pollinate with itself. So, all right, I hope you liked our garden update. My wife will hit, take over at the greenhouse, but I think everything looks good, everything's coming up. Uh, we'll give you another update as it starts getting about 6 to 12 inches, but uh, it's doing really, really good. And uh, again, you can see really big gardens, 50, it's about 50, 50, 50, 50, I think 55 uh, rows, uh, but it's it's doing really good. Uh, we were trying for 60, went to 50 the first garden, but then we got another five rows of things right here close to the pea. So, so we're excited. It's all looking good. It got drenched this morning, so hopefully it didn't hurt the seed too much. Um, but everything looks like it's doing really good. My daughter is stuck back in the mud, so we're going to go pull her out right quick. And uh, like I said, we will jump over to the greenhouse. go in the greenhouse i want to show you this it's been a storm again but this is our blueberry patch look how gorgeous all these blueberries are now we've just got tons of blueberries that are making we'll make a lot it, it, it'll fill out probably i don't know what i'll do i'd say that we'll have a lot of blueberries we'll get them all in there so this is the main blueberry patch um we've got like i said we've planted those other ones just to see if it'll do uh, okay mm -hmm. there uh, along with our blueberry patch um, you know where our greenhouse is there we have a, a this is a pear tree a plum tree we've got like three pear off this and no plum yet so some crab apple trees we did produce crab apple last year we don't really do much with it everybody says make jelly out of it but uh, we, we hadn't tried it we actually had a pretty good bit of crab apple actually it's been our most successful fruit tree and we don't even really eat it but uh, we do make we're gonna try to make jelly out of this year because we want to be uh, sustainable and, and, and use things that even sometimes we may not like even just to sell it so uh, crab apples did real well uh, last year uh, but like I said uh, I hope our fruit trees really do good we, we talked to the Pratts and the Aldermans when they came and toured our our little home so you see it's been raining um, our, our, what we wanted to learn this year was fruit so we've been really learning about cross-pollination trying to graph trying to understand the whole process of, uh, of making fruit trees fruitful of course so we do have a lemon tree and misty will talk about that and have a little orange tree in the greenhouse they both have blooms our lemon tree did real well last year uh so she'll start there in just a few moments hey 
Okay, guys, so I'm going to give you an update on my greenhouse. Um, here is some watermelon. We planted some watermelon seeds from in my gardener. And so these are going, and we're going to get those planted pretty soon. They are, they're growing beautifully. Um, I had some strawberries that were uprooted last year. I took uprooted the shoots and planted them and kept them in my greenhouse through the winter. And we have just planted those in bigger pots. And um, I'm hoping to really get some growth on those soon. These are marigolds. That's an extra strawberry plant that I had. I'll get that back in the ground. Marigolds and marigolds. Uh, we're going to put these in with our um, cucumbers and peas and tomatoes. And marigolds are supposed to help ward off um, certain bugs that can damage some of your garden. So we're going to try that and see. Um, we haven't really gotten a whole lot in companion planting, but we're going to try that and see. Um, here is uh, some basil that I don't remember where we found this. We ended up just picking it up to see if it would work and it's coming up beautifully. So we're going to keep this in a pot in the pot until it gets a little bit bigger and then we're going to actually transplant that out in one of my raised beds outside. Now this, Colby, how do you pronounce that? Hysa. Hysa, okay. Um, Colby wanted to plant this. Um, this was another one of M.I. Gardener seeds. Seeds from M.I. Gardener. And those are all coming up uh, very well. Now they're, they've not grown really fast, but um, they have germinated very well. Our cow out there has been on it today. Um, cumin this in this container right here, and um, I will probably break this off into smaller sections the bigger it gets and just take groups of it and put it in different pots. Um, I really need to read up more on that. This is wildflowers. So we're gonna let those grow and just flower in the pots. I'll put those out somewhere around my pool. Um, Y'all seen my tomatoes last time? They're still growing. Um, still putting off some blo still putting off some blooms, so um, we're just gonna let those go until they die. Uh, you see, I have some down here that are red and need to be picked probably soon, but we're just gonna. I need to tend to them some more, but we've been so busy trying to get stuff in the garden. I picked up some lavender plants from our local nursery. Lavender here, I've learned for two years in a row, does not like Mississippi soil. So I'm going to transplant these into some bigger pots eventually, but um, for now I'm just going to leave them in those pots. These were all some tomato seeds that um, I planted together, all of those, and I'm kind of waiting on those to get a little bit bigger before I transplant those in the garden. Um, they're, they're growing really slow so I'm just gonna put them in my window keep them watered real well and once, once they uh, get a little bit bigger we'll take them back out now uh, here is my orange tree I thought I lost this a few years ago it was much bigger than this but um I thought I lost it but you can see it is absolutely loaded with new growth and oranges everywhere. Now my lemon tree that's back here, I'm not real proud of it. My lemon tree, I'm not sure if it needs to be transplanted, if it's outgrown that pot or what. Mm -hmm. But you can see that my, at first I thought, well maybe it's not getting enough fertilizer or whatever. We're not huge on fertilizer. We use an organic brand or try to use compost, which is what I put in there last time. But um, it, my leaves just are not doing great. It does look like there's some new growth on there since I put compost and fertilizer in there last. So I'm hoping that this will pick up and do, and do better. That's stevia, that's just regular plants. Now let me tell you about my elderberry trees. I, I think I mentioned it on one of our last videos. I had some elderberries um, planted out down um, at the end of our driveway and they were like this big when I planted them and like two years later they were still this big. So I decided this early spring, probably early March, 
to dig those up and bring them in my greenhouse and they have exploded. So I'm going to leave these for a few more weeks and then we're going to take them back out and plant them in a different spot and I hope that they will continue to grow because my family uses elderberry all year long. Um, this is lemon basil and um, I have kept that in over the winter because I didn't know what the winter was going to do to it so I could, took some cuttings um, rooted those and plant those and that's just one of my extras now here is these are all uh, thyme um, thyme is another one this is one that I had out in my one of my raised beds it does not like our soil so I have dug that up and it and it has grown since I've kept it in here. But I didn't know how it was going to do. I mean, it has so much new growth. I'm so excited about that. But I bought two extra ones from our lo a local nursery here. Um, because I didn't know how this was going to do. So I'm super excited about that. They didn't totally die. These are all mints that I took from cuttings in my raised bed. This is also a cutting I took um, and have grown those up. Uh, just as extra. I'm probably going to take some of these live plants to our farmer's market and sell those. Now, these are rosemaries that I did from cuttings. Now, they have grown really slow, but this, y'all, this cutting was only maybe this big when I took it. So, you can tell that it's growing. It's doing good. They're just not fast growers. Rosemary, from what I've experienced where we live, just don't take off. This is a wild fern. My family went on a uh, adventure through the woods and I found this growing on the floor and I ran back to the house and got a shovel and dug it up and planted it and it's probably been what January or February and um, it's, it's got new growth so I'm super excited about that. I hope it'll grow up and that's basically like a free fern so I'm, I'm really excited about that now this rosemary down here is called carpet rosemary and it also you can see i've got mint growing in with, with it but it also did not do good in my raised beds um i don't know it's something about the herbs in my raised beds just don't do the greatest in the world now some of them do like my parsley is amazing um but this carpet rosemary did not do good this um, time did not do good and the sage did not do good. And I was really worried about losing this too. So a few weeks ago, I went out and dug it up and I said, I'm going to try to save it. There was just a few green leaves and it has, it has grown, hasn't it Colby? It's mm -hmm. really, um, I, I was really scared I was going to lose it, but it's grown. Again, thought I was going to lose it. So when I was at our local nursery, I went ahead and bought um, another sage plant just in case I lost it. But I am happy to say that it's staying alive. It just, for some reason, some of my herbs just don't like uh, the raised bed. So anyway, this is also some mint that I uh, dug up in kelp and probably needs to be watered. Um, this deal. Now, I want to show y'all what I'm going to do with this deal. Okay, so this deal has got some little seed heads on here that I'm going to keep and save those. These are the one. This is what I'm really looking for right here. Those seeds right there, each one of them will give me a new deal plant. So and these are ready. They're completely dried out. It's, I just have to take them and harvest, uh, take them and put them in a the bag. Um, here is some cucumbers that got mixed in with some stuff that we were, I don't remember what it were, was. My girls were playing in the seeds and opened a bag and it spilled in my soil. And I, it was something else. But so anyway, I took those out and put them in these plants so that they can go in the garden. So I'm, I just, I couldn't throw them away. Can't throw seeds away. Don't throw plants away. This is oregano. This was a cutting I took early last fall. Again, it was very tiny cutting. I established roots on it and put it, and it has just grown. It's really, really gone since it's warmed up here in the south. It's really grown and it's done great. All of these are just plants I picked up at our local nursery today. I'll be planting all of those. Super excited. I love to put this kind of stuff by my pool. 
So um, just uh, some random flowers. We love color around our pool, so we're gonna be doing that. Now here's all my elderberry plants. Um, I, I've, I've had ups and downs with these. I, I don't really know where to start. We got these as um, little cuttings like this. Um, a lot of them looked like they were gonna start dying. And so I put them in soil the ones that showed a little bit of growth and they looked amazing and now they're starting to look horrible again so I moved them from one location that I had on moved and moved them over here you can tell this one looks great new growth on it however this one looks terrible this one looked great and then I come out here one day and it looked absolutely horrible so I'm, I'm just not sure what's going on with these. I don't know if some cold wind drafted in because I had these sitting up in the sun. Um, so I don't know if they got too hot or too cold. I'm not quite sure what happened with these. So my plan is to leave them where they're at. Over here, I'm gonna put them back under the heat lamps and just watch them, keep feeding them, keep them warm and moist, and hopefully I have not lost those. So I'm just, I'm not quite sure about these. I've never done anything with elderberry cuttings before, so. I was super excited when I got them, then I kind of got disheartened, and then I got super excited when I had several that were doing good. Now I'm just kind of disheartened with them again, so I don't know, we'll see. These are all um, oregano cuttings. These are all super fresh. So I took a cutting, I don't think this one's gonna root. So this one's the only one out of all of them that's not gonna root. Um, this one I don't think probably will not make it either. This one is doing great. So I established good roots. It still looks like it's struggling a little bit, but it's gotta adjust to this soil. So it's only been in this new soil for just a few days and um, probably about that two or three week mark, it'll really make a turn and start to, to, to look good. Um, it could, because you will notice I did the same thing with these basils. I took cuttings, um, little tiny cuttings, rooted them, and then you can tell they've really, really taken off. Um, they've grown tremendously. When I first put them in the, um, when I first put them in this soil and transplanted them, even a few days later, they kind of look like this. It's like a shock to them. But then you can see that they really perked up. They've started growing and they look great. Um, all this basil, my mother plant back here is well over a year old. Um, but I just keep keeping the flowers off of it. All of these plants I took from clippings here and started new plants. And I've just kind of kept that cycle going like I've told y'all before with my basil. So super excited about that. All of these over here are peppers and peppers and tomatoes except for this. And honey, you moved this and this is it didn't have a sage. Sage, yeah, sage. yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, I can start to tell the leaves are really starting to come out. Um, we happened to come across some sage too, so I picked those up and dropped them in soil, and I, because I thought I was going to lose them, so I'm super excited that my sage is doing good. No, this is in my gardener sage. I planted this. Um, this come in the packet that we got from in my gardener. Um, so super excited about that. These will have to be taken out and transplanted soon too. Now I want to show you what the deal, what some deal is going on with my tomatoes. Um, so all of my tomatoes look great. We took most of them are already out planted in the garden. They were at least this size on um, most of them. Some of them were a little bit smaller. So if you look close, like I said, I'm afraid that my greenhouse got too cold because I had come out here one day and it was like over 100 degrees. So I turned the heater off, a storm blew in and it got freezing cold that night. Welcome to Mississippi. So when I come out here a few days later to check my tomatoes, they started looking like not very healthy at all. So again, I moved on to a different location where they can get different temperature, different um, uh, lighting. And I'm hoping that these are gonna turn back around. Some of them are starting to look a little bit better. 
but I, I'm a, like this one is probably just no hope for that one. Um, but I'm hoping that these are going to kind of turn her, turn around and start looking better. Um, so that's pretty much it in the greenhouse um, as far as an update. I showed you guys my seeds um, from my aloes. I also plan on taking some aloes to our farmer's market. Um, that'll be some of the other live plants. And then of course I showed you guys how I found the lettuce in my aloe and I have allowed these to grow up. And when they grow up, when you're not harvesting off of your plants, your plant will go to seed. They will get flowers and then they'll get pods and then they'll form those seeds in those pods. And if you wanna harvest those, you need to let them dry out. So you see this one, the difference in these is this one is starting to get real crumbly and crinkly. You can hear it. And it's starting to, it's not smushy anymore like these. They're, they're, they're dried out and then that's when you collect your seeds. So um, that's an update in the greenhouse, what's going on in my greenhouse. So hope y'all enjoyed that. Happy homesteading, y'all.